Hello! Welcome to the Code with Chris Q&A, where I'll take a couple of minutes to answer questions that you guys have. So for today, I have a question that I commonly get from people who are looking to get started in building apps. And that question is, can I use a PC or do I need a Mac to build apps? And let me just put this into context because I teach how to build um, iPhone and iPad apps. So the answer is yes, you do need a Mac if you want to use the Apple supported tools, basically the tools that Apple has provided for us developers to build their iOS apps. However, there are third party tools and third party solutions that can be used on the PC to build iOS apps. So for the rest of this short segment, I just want to go through some of those options and pros and cons. Oh, before we get into that, another kind of related question that I get sometimes is, can I use an iPad to build apps for the iPhone or iPad? And the answer is no, because the tools that Apple provides us, it's called Xcode. It's the application where we actually write our code in to build those apps. That application is only available on the Mac on OS X to be specific. So you can only install and use it if you have a Mac computer. Okay, so that's the kind of Apple supported tool. Um, now onto the PC solutions. One of the things which I've seen people do is to virtualize the OS X platform on their PC. So they're having a virtual Mac running on their PC. So it can get a little technical in how to set that up. So I'll leave it up to you guys to look into that. So that's virtualization. Another solution is that you can rent a Mac remotely. So there are services like macincloud.com where you can pay a monthly fee and you can remotely log into uh, one of their Macs and you can use it uh, for app development. In fact, on their site, I believe that this is one of the, the main features that they promote. Uh, and lastly, another set of solutions are all of these cross-platform tools that are available on the PC. So some of them are AppCelerator, PhoneGap, Unity, Xamarin, all of these tools that are available on the PC, uh, these development environments are designed for you to be able to write your code and build your app once, but then be able to deploy and deploy is just a fancy word for um, export into an app. Uh, these tools allow you to code your app once and then deploy it onto multiple platforms. And that's why they're called cross-platform tools. Now you might be thinking right off the bat that this sounds good. This is exactly what you want to use. But as with anything where there are alternatives, there's definitely pros and cons. So the pro obviously is that you can write your code once and you can deploy it to multiple platforms. However, uh, because they aren't Apple supported and basically they're taking your code and translating it to use the Apple software development kit and hit those uh, device APIs or device interfaces, um, it's not perfect. So if Apple releases a brand new feature tomorrow and they release it, they release support for it on their supported tool, on their official tool called Xcode, um, and they, you know, they update to iOS 9 or whatever, the iOS is at when you listen to this, the other cross-platform tools will have to kind of play catch up. There will be um, a little bit of time where they are retooling to provide support for these new features. Um, and the other thing is that there may be bugs because at the end of the day, it's a translation. It's not perfect. So on many of these cross-platform tools, you may uh, encounter bugs which you otherwise would not have encountered if you were using the Apple, the official Apple tools to build apps. And furthermore, there may be some features that are totally unsupported in these cross-platform tools. I've only listed a handful of these cross-platform tools, but uh, maybe in the future, I'll do another segment where I dive more in depth into these PC solutions, if you guys are interested. My focus and experience has been with Xcode, um, the the tools that Apple provides us. Uh, so I can't comment too much about the other tools which I have mentioned. I can't compare them too much until I do some research and look into them myself. Um, but the lessons that I teach and the courses which I provide on my site, uh, they are with the Apple provided tools. So if you want to build iPhone and iPad apps using the Apple tools, then this is the place to be. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time.
Bye for now.